The original Toy Soldiers came out of the blue in 2012 and surprised everyone with how fun, engaging, and deep a tower defense game can be. It went beyond simply dropping in a turret here and there and hoping for the best. It added style in its highly imaginative 3D settings made to look like a child's toy room. And what tipped it over the top was the ability to control any defensive unit and knock down a few enemy toys using your own skills. It was developed by Signal Studios but published by Microsoft. It was, and still is, a blast to play, and still worthy of its $10 price tag. This year, Signal Studios released Toy Soldiers War Chest. Published by Ubisoft, War Chest is the first Toy Soldiers game available on a PlayStation platform. So right there I can say to anyone who missed out on Toy Soldiers because you didn't own a PC or an Xbox 360, now is your chance to see what all the fuss is about. But this time around, Toy Soldiers is playing with the added benefits of crossing action figure genres instead of sticking with just one. Players can use the traditional World War I toys, but you can also use toys that are similar to, but legally different than, Rainbow Bright and the Care Bears, complete with laser blasting unicorns, stereotypical role playing action figures, and science fiction space marine figures. As DLC, the game also offers legitimately licensed toys like G.I. Joe, Cobra, He Man, and Assassin's Creed which just sticks out like a sore thumb compared to the other options offered. In the end, the effect is very similar to when, as a child, you'd take your toys and play with them against your brother's or sister's toys. And it's all very lighthearted and gameplay-wise, it's super fun. The game balances a few acts to judge your total performance. Amount of money spent on upgrades and repairs and new units, versus amount of enemy soldiers that infiltrate the player base, versus how quickly and how brutally the player destroys all the waves that come into play. Good performance is rewarded with in-game currency that can be used to unlock upgrades to specific defensive structures. Players who are really tearing it up on the game boards build up a meter to unleash special battery-operated toys that have a pretty limited health or time meter, but can do some massive damage. Aside from it just being fun, it also boasts a pretty hefty challenge. The campaign will take the average player a while to burn through, but I can't say that the challenge incline was a steadily gradual one. I felt the game jumped up in difficulty between missions pretty harshly at times. Like Toy Soldiers before it, War Chest retains the unique style and nostalgic frivolity that Signal Studios seems to absolutely nail with consistency. It's fun to see things around the battlefield that constantly remind you that all of this is taking place at a really tiny scale. But it's not all Super Destructo Unicorn Beams. War Chest has its fair share of problems. On PC, the game has a laughably small customization option set. It's also worthy to note that War Chest is locked at 30 frames per second. My machine ran it pretty smoothly and I wasn't bothered by it as much, but there are plenty of people out there who will find this problematic. I was also sad to see that there's a fair amount of prompts to purchase more in-game currency using real money. It's important to note that everything in the game, except for the cosmetic licensed DLC, can be unlocked by playing the game, but it takes a good amount of grinding. When it comes to the DLC, I don't feel it's necessary for everyone to purchase them all. Aside from some slightly different skills, they all boil down to the same unit types. Anti-infantry, anti-armor, anti-air, and long-range artillery. So if you're going to pick up War Chest, I only recommend getting the DLC that suits your style. The Assassin's Creed skin pack is a little embarrassing, and honestly, I think it kind of hurts the Assassin's Creed brand. Armies of soldiers within the He-Man universe? Makes sense. Dozens of Care Bears? How else are you going to do a proper Care Bear stare? G.I. Joe and Cobra? That's a no-brainer. But seeing hundreds of white-cloaked goofballs running around just sort of sucks all the mystique away from being a Renaissance-era Italian ninja. And the voiceover of the Ezio toy is just... bad. You can't handle me! The Tom Clancy Ghost Universe would have made much more sense with a Sam Fisher hero toy instead. Ah oh well, missed opportunity. Aside from that, moving the special hero unit toys around on screen could use a little tweaking. Each one is a bit sluggish and they all get stuck on tiny bumps in the terrain pretty easily. War Chest is a legitimately fun game. People who only pick up the base game will get their $15 worth. But it's unfortunate that they're still subjected to microtransaction temptations. If it was a free-to-play title, I think I'd be more understanding, and at the same time, I wouldn't be reviewing it. The licensed DLC is a fun idea, but sadly they simply boil down to cosmetic purchases. There's no additional story or campaign at all to be had where He-Man attempts to conquer the playroom, or where G.I. Joe liberates the toy chest from Cobra's tyranny. 
It's a fun, fun game that has been scuffed up a whole lot by corporate junk. This video is made possible through generous fan donations on Patreon.